Hi, I'm DJ Greer and welcome to Live Big. Have you ever wondered why some leaders are able to thrive in different generations while others are left behind? Today, we're going to join my dad for a closer look at the life of a transitional and transformational leader that remained relevant during his day versus the life of someone that became a person of the past. Let's dig in. First Samuel chapter 16 and verse 1. Now the Lord said to, to Samuel, those of you who do not know much about Samuel, uh, I want to let you know that Samuel was relevant in two major biblical periods. He was the last judge of Israel, and the, the judges ruled for uh, roughly about 300 years. Uh, and he would also anoint the first two kings of Israel, and the kings actually uh, ruled for probably about 400 uh, plus years or so, right up to, to the time of captivity. And Samuel was a, uh, a transitional as well as a transformational uh, figure in the Bible. And we should pay attention to him because we are also in a transitional period in American uh, history. And, uh, you know, in the future, we may very well uh, look, look at, uh, you know, American history, you know, pre-COVID and post-COVID. So we're in a, a time of transition, uh, a time of, of, of great change, and uh, Samuel lived in times such as ours. First Samuel 3 and 19, listen to what the scriptures say about him. So Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and he let none of his words fall to the ground. Uh, only Jesus had a testimony such as Samuel's. I want you to imagine living a life that God so honored you that he never let anything you said, not one word you spoke, ever fall to the ground or go unfulfilled. This was, you know, the, the, one of the most remarkable men, actually probably the most remarkable uh, man in his time. Let's go back to 1 Samuel 16.1. Now the Lord said to Samuel, now Samuel was what I would consider uh, today's person. Actually, the title today is Yesterday, Today, and Tomorrow's Person. Yesterday, Today, and Tomorrow's Person. So Samuel, we're, we're beginning with him, and he's actually a today's man. Despite the fact that he linked two different periods or ages, he remained current and relevant in both. He not only oversaw the transition from a military uh, rulership, if you will, in Israel, uh, he, he also led or, or, or anointed those in the period of the monarchy. And he, he was the main person that, that brought these two ages together. So he would uh, transition, again, the nation to embrace the first king. But then he anointed the first two kings into office. And uh, as time went on, uh, you know, not only did he, again, uh, bridge the gap between two periods, he also had to deal with transition in the period of the monarchies. So when, when Saul sinned, and I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, he was the one that anointed David. So he's a transitional figure in fast-moving times. And uh, let's keep reading. Now the Lord said to Samuel, Samuel, how long will you mourn <clears throat> for Saul? His prolonged grief had a lot to do with his love for the king, King Saul, who was the first king of Israel. But I think also he was experiencing something that all of us are experiencing today called future shock, future shock. This is how the dictionary de de defines future shock. shock. It's the stress and disorientation that people feel when they're subject to too much change in a short period of time. So, you, you know, we, we, we celebrate the beauty of, of a butterfly, but really recognize all the change that it had to go through to achieve its beauty. And uh, this was an age, again, very, very similar to ours. A lot of change, a lot is, is going on, corrupt leadership, it's just the, the whole nine. Now the Lord said to Samuel, how long would you, will you mourn for Saul? Now he was, of course, grieving over the fact that someone he loved was being removed from office. But, but you know, sometimes change is, is, is mixed with the pain of loss. It's a little bit like, you know, graduating high school, though that's a little bit sweeter. You know, you, you miss all your friends and, and there's a sweetness about the last four years, uh, but you're excited about the change and what's ahead and, 
and there's sorrow and, and, and gladness all at the, 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 the same time. But to stay relevant, it was important. This, this is pay attention. To stay relevant, God needed Samuel to, to make sure he sided with heaven above his personal feelings and his personal disappointments. It's never wrong to do the right thing, even when we don't feel like it. And this was the situation of Samuel. And God said to Samuel, this is his prophet, this is his servant, the last judge of Israel, the man that anointed Saul to be king. How long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Now, Samuel was about the same age as Saul. And, uh, you know, it, it's our obedience that determines our, our, our spiritual longevity, not our titles or our age. Um, you know, you, you can look at this and think that I'm saying to the, tomorrow's, I'm sorry, yesterday's men are necessarily older men. Uh, both of these men uh, were the same age, and Saul, I'm sorry, Samuel remained today's man throughout his whole life. However, Saul became a yesterday's man. But let's take a look how that happened to Saul. How did Saul become, uh, actually he, he moved from today's man to a yesterday's man. And this is what I want all of us to guard against, becoming yesterday's man. 1 Samuel 18 and verse 6. Now it happened as they were coming home, when David was returning from the slaughter of the Philistines, that the women had come out of the cities of Israel singing and, and, and dancing to meet King Saul with tambourines, with joy and, and musical instruments. You know, this was the, the Supremes mixed with the Clark sisters, the, the judge, uh, SWV in Vogue, TLC, and, and all these girl groups, you know, Destiny Child, the Spice Girls, you know, all, all these ladies came out all at the same time. And, and this was number one on, on the billboard charts. So the woman sang, and uh, the women sang as they danced, and, and here are their lyrics, real, real simple lyrics. Saul has slain his thousands, and David his tens of thousands. Thousands. Now, Saul, the Bible says, was very angry. You know, insecurity takes down more people than fame, than power, than, than sex or money. You know, under Saul's great crown was tremendous insecurity that would eventually destroy his reign. Now, we all deal with anxieties. We all deal with some level of insecurity. But, but here's the deal, I'm not competing with anyone except myself. My only goal is to be better than I was yesterday. And as long as I stay focused, Derek, you're just trying to be better than Derek. I'm not trying to be better than the next person in the next seat at what they do. As long as I, I, I keep that in my mind, I stay relatively safe. You know, we, we can't allow our, our insecurities to become the lens that we begin to, 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 to view people and, and allow that, that, that lens of insecurity color how we interpret other people's motivations and, and intents in our, our lives. And the saying displeased him. When he heard the song, he was upset because he was not the one being sung about. And he said, they have ascribed, well, actually he was included, but he was number two. They have ascribed David tens, ten thousands, and to me they have ascribed only thousands. He felt upstaged. He felt that someone else was getting a little more of the limelight than him. And uh, it, it, was, it was upsetting to, uh, to, to Saul. And here's the deal. We'll have emotions like that, but it's how you handle it that makes all the difference in the world. I said this last time, and I probably said it the week before. I'm going to quote Martin Luther again. The bird may fly over your head, uh, but you can't stop that. Uh, however, you can stop the bird from making a nest on your head. And there's going to be thoughts that come through your mind, feelings that flash. But it's your ob obligation to make sure that thing does not nest. You hear what I'm saying? And find a home in your thinking and in your heart. You're tuned in to the Live Big Broadcast. Don't go anywhere. There's more teaching to come. Check out the Derek Grimm Ministries YouTube channel. Revisit your favorite moments from the Live Big broadcast and watch popular teachings. Get in the now hot takes and dive into Bishop Greer's Ministry Minute and bite-sized noonday teachings that can only be found online. Get all of this and more at home or while on the go. So, subscribe to the Derek Greer Ministries YouTube channel and hit the notification bell to get fresh content from Derek Greer that will help you grow stronger, live bigger, and get closer to God. 
it says that the saying displeased him and, and that the song made him uh, uh, upset. Now, if you constantly compete with others, you will become bitter. It's only when you compete with yourself that you can become better. So keep that in mind. You set yourself up for frustration and, and just a miserable life when you're always competing with other people. Now, what more can he have but the kingdom? This, this, this is uh, pretty serious. His insecurity makes him question the motivation of probably one of his most loyal subjects. Uh, when we read this narrative, David is faithful to Saul to the end. So, all, so Saul eyed David. Actually, the Bible calls it an evil eye. Uh, I think it's the King James Version. I'm sorry. It calls it the evil eye. So Saul eyed David from that day forward. So what happened here is Saul's insecurity caused him to miss a great relationship with David. Again, David, um, you know, had opportunities to kill Saul. He did not do it. Uh, David, in a couple moments, we're going to see that Saul tries to kill him twice. And even though he defeated Goliath, he did not lift his hand against Saul. David was a man after God's heart. And, and David was a loyal and honorable man. And because of his insecurity, because of his lens, he couldn't see it. And he missed out on that relationship. You know, think about all the relationships that you miss out on because, you know what, insecurity is a bandit. It is a thief. It will steal from you. You know, it, it says it's trying to protect us. It, it says, you know what, I have your, your best in view. But every time it shows up in my life, I end up being robbed. And uh, it's not my friend. It's not there to bless me or to help me. It always steals opportunities and relationship and the rest. And it happened on the next day. That the next day, so pay attention to the connection here. Right after this evil eye comes on him and he brews and brews and brews and brews on it. And it happened on the next day that the distressing spirit from God came upon Saul and he prophesied inside the house. Now, one minute he's prophesying, and the next minute he's trying to murder somebody. How many of y'all know some believers like that? Uh, but but here's the deal: the evil eye is what opened up the door. To his life to the devil or the door of his life to the devil. It, how do I say that better? Insecurity is not as harmless as you think. And when we start meditating on the wrong thing, we give a landing pad for the adversary in our emotions and in our thinking and in our judgment. So what happens is, again, he, he starts looking at him through this lens. And, and you know, you, you may be the same person before the lens changes and, and you're like, and the person, though, sees you differently. It's not that you change, it's their lens change. So it's like I've said before, everybody loves you until you're a threat. Everybody's for you until they see you as competition for the same thing. So often when your attitude changes suddenly about a person and that person hasn't changed, you're the one that changed. And you have to take a look in your heart and make sure that uh, you are not using a lens like uh, King Saul here. So David played music with his hands. So I want you to imagine Jay or Ephraim, you know, uh, playing the piano as at other times. But, but there was a spear in Saul's hand. Imagine me having one of those 1950s big old heavy microphones and, and then I swing it at, at one of them. This is the situation. However, a spear is a lot more deadly th than a microphone. And Saul cast the spear so he's, he's, he's acting on his insecurity because he, he didn't deal with it. He, these thoughts landed in his head. They didn't just cross, oh, no, that's not right. No, it's a good man. He, he didn't fight. He, he, he felt privileged and, 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 you know, he was everybody's, oh, it's not fair. And how come he has this? And now he's playing the piano and, and he seems so happy and, and he's so gifted. And, and, and how come I don't have that? All that's going through his head. So Saul cast a spear for he said, I will pin David to the wall. But Jay and Ephraim escaped my presence twice. See, David was so committed to the king that he allowed this, he, he, he endured this twice. Now, now David had, had killed the giant. So David could have, you know, lay in wait, you know, with, with his sling and, and just as easily killed this king. But, you know, David do doesn't do that. He, he, 
The king tries to kill him once. You kill me, try to kill me once, I'm not coming back. Um, but then he comes back, and actually you're going to find that he's in the presence again, and the king tries to kill him uh, another time. So David's heart is incredible. He loves this guy despite his faults. He's committed to this guy despite his faults. And sometimes, you know, our attitudes toward those God places in res- re- uh, authority says more about our hearts than it does about that particular uh, leader. Uh, David's heart is golden here. Verse 12. Now Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him, meaning Saul was threatened by the grace on David's life. And this is how we become yesterday's man, by becoming overly preoccupied with other people's giftings. You know, we have thousands of people in this church, and each person is probably better at something or several things than I am. And if I am going to lead successfully, I have to salute and celebrate people and their abilities and not get threatened uh, because I don't have the same abilities. Even amongst, you know, ministers, you know, I happen to be a teacher. Others are great preachers. Others, you know, uh, uh, they, 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 they prophesy more readily, etc. cetera. Uh, but this is my gift. So I operate in my gifting, and I'm not competing with Bishop Jakes. I'm not competing with others. I'm doing what God's called me to do, nothing more, nothing less. And when I get to heaven, I'll get a full reward as long as I've done fully what God has called me to do in, in life. Now, Saul was, was afraid because the Lord was with him. You see, it's important to understand that God does not measure us. Ag- now, people do this. But God does not measure us against the next person. He only measures us against uh, our our, our purpose. Uh, A flower doesn't compete with the flower next to it. All it does is blossom and bloom. And you know what? Uh, If you were created to fly, fly. But if you were created to run, run. The cheetah is no less beautiful uh, than than a bird uh, because it doesn't fly. The cheetah does what a cheetah does. A bird does what a bird does. A fish does what a fish does. And each of us have different purposes in our lives. And our only obligation before Lord, the Lord is to fulfill that particular purpose. Let's move to 1 Samuel 3, 13 and verse uh, 7. We're going to watch this insecurity grow deeper and deeper in the life of uh, Saul here. And some of the Hebrews crossed over the Jordan to the land of Gad and Gilead. As for Saul, this is King Saul, he was still at Gilgal, and all the people followed him trembling. Uh, the people were frightened, and it was, it, it was a time where people needed leadership. They needed secure leaders that they could trust in, because there were times like these, very, very dangerous times. Verse 8, then he waited seven days according to the time set by Samuel, but Samuel did not come to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. So Saul said, Bring a burnt offering and peace offerings here to me. And he offered the burnt offering. Now, this may be blind to you, but in this time in history, only the priests were permitted to offer offerings to God. And the problem was Saul refused to stay in his lane. And he constantly wanted someone else's anointing. And one of the the ways you can know that that you might be desirous of another person's uh, position is when you keep criticizing them, particularly when your criticism is particularly harsh. Because deep down inside, you feel you can do a better job. And we have to guard against these types of things. Saul, even though he was king, I mean, this is the highest position in the land. But a position does not change your heart or, or, or your, your, your security level. Uh, you think, well, when I get this or when I get there, I'll finally be secure. It won't happen. If you're insecure where you are, you'll be insecure where you go. And this was the case with, with, with Saul. He never made peace with the particular gifts that God had given him. He never fully embraced them and celebrated and said, Lord, I'm thankful that I, I have these and they are more than enough. Verse 10. Now it happened, as soon as he had finished presenting the burnt offering, that Samuel came and Saul went out to meet him that he may, uh, might greet him. And Samuel said, what have you Done. It's important to have other leaders in our life that can speak plainly to us. Now, here's the king. But Samuel, though he's no longer a judge, he is uh, the priest of God. Um, but 
again, let, let's, let's keep watching. We're going to skip to verse 14. Watch how Saul becomes yesterday's man. God may be using you today and, and working through you today, or you might even be tomorrow's man. We'll, we'll discover what that's about uh, a little bit later. Uh, but you can ruin right where you are by not dealing with your insecurity. And really, the insecurity is when you make it all about you. Oh, I, I, I wish, I, I, I. When you start, I, in the middle of uh, the word pride is that big old or that little letter that, that becomes huge, that letter I. And when, when I, I, when you, when you start doing that, you have to be careful. You have to guard yourself uh, uh, against these obsessive eyes in our life. 14. But now your kingdom shall not continue. Watch this. The Lord has, this is tough, has sought for himself a man or another man, a different man, not you anymore, after his own heart. A man like God who would be comfortable in his own skin. A man who would be loyal and faithful and obedient no matter what. My Bible says godliness with contentment is great gain. A lot of folks look at their paychecks or how many followers they have, how many likes they have, and there's just a zillion different ways to, to, to measure, you know, their, their, their uh, sense of self. Uh, but the, one of the greatest measurements of what you've accomplished in your life is to achieve a sense of contentment and God's pleasure. Again, the book of Timothy, I believe it says, godliness with contentment is great gain. Matter of fact, I, I would say that contentment is, is more valuable than, than, than all the money, fame, power, sex, whatever you can have in the world uh, and all that you think you're missing out on. When, when you're content, I mean, I, I know multimillionaires. I know people that are famous, that are miserable. Um, they are not content. They're competitive. They, they're, they're, they're looking at the next actor. They're looking at the next businessman. And, and no matter what they have, they don't have enough. And they, they, they need to, to, to grab that as well. They're married folks, you know, they, they're not content with their husband or wife. They got to get the next one or, or is that, that other girl because the grass always looks greener on the other side. The real blessing of the Lord is when there's godliness and contentment. King Saul had rejected the contentment that comes with obedience, the contentment that, 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 that comes with uh, uh, listening to what the Lord says, a relationship with the Lord. He, over and over and over again, he kept reaching for, for things that, that were not his to take. So God finally had to reject him as king. You know, it's not that God will ever leave us as much as we leave him, and, and, and at some point, he's forced to acknowledge our decision. And this is what happened with Saul. Saul had left the Lord for, you know, whatever those things that were eating him on the inside. He left the Lord for those things, and actually those things became an idol. And self can become an idol in our life if we don't deal with it aggressively. The Bible talks to us about crucifying our flesh, meaning there's no nice way sometimes to deal uh, with these idols. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. But then he says, surely, surely I have a delightful inheritance. If God is pleased with me, if, if God is, uh, if his hand is on me and if he's with me, I already have more than enough. Even during a time of uncertainty, Samuel chose to do the right thing and stay obedient to the Lord. In contrast, Saul was insecure and in competition with David. Saul's preoccupation with David's giftings ultimately turned him from being a current leader to yesterday's man. In our lives, if we want to remain current and relevant, we must focus on being content with our own gifts. Remember, you aren't competing against anyone but yourself. Your only goal is to be better than you were yesterday. Before I go, I want to tell you about a book my dad poured his soul into, When God Stops. It's the story of what eight figures in the Bible did to get God's attention and have him stop to address their particular situations. Also, in this book, my dad shares details about his own personal experiences with God. If you are looking to jumpstart your faith and take things to another level, get your copy of When God Stops Today. The announcer is coming with more information. Question. 
How do you get God to stop for you and give special attention to your situation? What does it take to stand out in the crowd and get God-sized results? Find the answers to these questions and more in Dr. Derek Greer's latest book, When God Stops. This one-of-a-kind book highlights eight hidden figures from the Bible who show us how to dream, think, and live the type of life that God not only notices, but one that he rewards. Not only that, but in this book, Dr. Greer shares his personal journey like he never has before. Hear his testimony and go beyond what you see to get the real story behind Dr. Greer's most life-changing moments with God. So jumpstart your faith today. Learn how to get God's special attention and see God-sized results in your life. Go to whengodstops.com today. That's whengodstops.com to find out more. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode of Live Big. Until next time, I invite you to subscribe to the Derek Greer Ministries YouTube channel. There throughout the week, you can revisit your favorite teachings. Also, you will get access to special videos that are designed to power you, your family, and your friends through the week. Best of all, it's free to subscribe. While you are there, be sure to hit the notification bell so you know when my dad has uploaded new content. Stay tuned for more information. And until next time, live big. Check out the Derek Grimm Ministries YouTube channel. Revisit your favorite moments from the Live Big broadcast and watch popular teachings. Get in the now hot takes and dive into Bishop Greer's Ministry Minutes and bite-sized noonday teachings that can only be found online. Get all of this and more at home or while on the go. So, subscribe to the Derek Greer Ministries YouTube channel and hit the notification bell to get fresh content from Derek Greer that will help you grow stronger, live bigger, and get closer to God. Connect with Derek Greer Ministries on social media to access Bishop Greer's latest teachings and content. Follow on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Also, be sure to subscribe to Bishop Greer's YouTube channel at Dr. Derek Greer VA and get the latest episodes, ministry minutes, noonday teachings, and more. While you're there, be sure to hit that notification bell to find out when Bishop Greer's latest power-packed videos are uploaded. So subscribe and get ready to propel your spiritual life forward in 2021 and beyond. Derek Greer Ministries is certified by the ECFA. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time on Live Big with Derek Greer.